Hey, race fans, this is Chet Christner with your Comp Cam's top five moments on flow racing from this past week. Our number five is the first sprint car race after a 532-day COVID hiatus at Parasado Speedway where the demon Damian Gardner would be the one doing the hunting as he stalked Austin Williams during the Sokola shootout. Gardner tried high, Gardner tried low, and eventually his probing paid off as he was able to get a run around the outside of Williams and pick up the lead on lap number 19. The win would be Damian's 97th with the USAC CRA sprint cars the field off turn four to begin the Casa Grande Builders 75 for the Granite State Pro Stock Series. We are underway. We're going to pound a little pavement for our number four as Stafford Motor Speedway opened up their season with the first ever appearance of the Granite State Pro Stock Series. Early on, the 08 of Mike O'Sullivan got the 05 of Craig Bushy so far up his snoot. Bushy could have checked him for COVID. That contact would send them both into the turn one safer barrier, pulverizing O'Sullivan's 08 car. And that, my friends, ain't gonna buff out. Might be further ahead and take it out back and shoot it. Meanwhile, Joey Pawarczyk, who goes by the nom de course Joey Pohl, weaseled his way down low to grab the lead for Eddie McDonald. Joey would go on to lead the rest of the way and pick up the inaugural run for the Grand State Pro Stock Series at Stafford. This is round number two of Castrol Flow Racing Night in America, and we're underway at Atomic. It's Castrol Flow Racing Night in America at Atomic Speedway for our number three, and Devin Moran would take charge from his pole starting position at the drop of the green. At that point forward, it become a battle for second, and let me tell you, it was a tussle of epic proportions with slide job after slide job after slide job. In fact, slide jobs were being handed out like Grandma hands out candy from her purse. Eventually, Davenport cleared the field, ran down Moran to turn number one, one and two, threw a slide job for the lead. Moran battles back and bam! A wet blanket's thrown on to party by Tyler Herb as he brings out the caution. Devin Moran would go on to lead the remainder of the Fireball 50 and pick up the $22,000 payday. Pretty freaking awesome to come down here and win. I haven't won here in forever, it feels like. And this is one of, if not my favorite tracks. So to come here and win in front of the hometown crowd on a Thursday night, uh, pretty badass. Right, Biasi get past. That was the 23M of Kenny Miller. Big ride, big ride for Biasi. He goes up and over a few times. USAC's Keystone Invasion at Big Diamond Speedway is our number two. And during B-Main action, Joey Biasi touches tires and catapults himself into a cartwheel catastrophe. That one was probably my fault as I had him on my dirt draft. Jake Swanson and Tanner Thorson would stage a battle for the ages with Thorson knock, knock, knocking on a door for lap after lap around the 3 8 mile. Beep, beep. I'm here to compete, says Thorson. Eventually, Thorson gave it the old razzle-dazzle on the rim and grabbed the lead, picking up his first career USAC National Sprint Car win. And how could a racetrack resurrection not be our number one? West Virginia Motor Speedway, which had been closed for eight years and being used as a cow pasture, was brought back to life by Cody Watson and the crew, and the fans rolled out in droves to support the 5 8 mile speed plan. And by speed plan, we're talking about a new track record and a top speed of 129 mile per hour clocked at the end of the front shoot for Jonathan Davenport. It was a small but mighty field of super lates that seemed determined to cram as much racing and drama into their 30 lap feature event as possible. Race leader Devin Moran would slough a shoe and go to the tail. Davenport would do the same. Herb would be the leader for a bit with Colton Flinter in pursuit. Davenport Moran would battle back to the front where on the final lap Davenport slips high, Moran shoots low and the leader Tyler breaks a wheel and all this happens in turn number two headed to the checkered flag. That sets us up for a green white checker finish and Davenport would emerge victorious and West Virginia Motor Speedway would return from the grave or the cow pasture in this case.